ahora sí. Bueno, much, buenas noches a todos, muchas gracias Chao. por estar una vez más junto a nosotros en estos webinars de la Sociedad Interamericana de Endoscopía Digestiva, coordinado por el doctor Víctor Bracho del Centro Médico La Trinidad. So we are very happy to have Dr. Sano Sensei here with us and it will be a pleasure to hear him in this amazing NBI webinar with the cold snare and all the technologies that uh, he has to show us. Dr. Víctor Bracho, it's all to you to make the introduction. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, for us, it's a very, it's a, it's a huge pleasure to have with us to Dr. to Professor Yasushi Sano. He's the director and chief of Gastrointestinal Center and Institute of Minimally Invasive Endoscopic Care uh, at the Sano Hospital in uh, the city of Kobe in Japan. Uh, I think that the, the topic we are going to talk, uh, uh, Dr. Sano is going to talk about, is one of the leading techniques for the diagnosis of whether you send the patient to, this, to surgery or whether you can treat the, the, the lesion of colorectal lesions by using endoscopic techniques. Uh, Dr. Sano, please, uh, you uh, start with, the, with, the, with, with your speak. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, um... Uh, thank you, Victor, and uh, thank you, Asato-sensei. Uh, good evening. Uh, in Japan, it's a good morning. So um, uh, I would like to talk about uh, so cold snare resection uh, using uh, imaging hazard endoscopy. Uh, what, when, how to uh, this time. But anyway, so uh, everybody in the world is... Uh, fighting against the COVID-19. Uh, I think uh, in Japan also, uh, the infectious patient uh, uh, number is in increasing. So that uh, second wave now. So uh, we stay home still, maybe uh, several months. Uh, yeah. So I think, I hope in the South American uh, people and the South American doctors uh, would be uh, safer and maybe in the near future recover against uh, so COVID-19. So um, I would like to start. So uh, as you know, uh, so cold snare polypectomy, uh, so developed in 1992. And uh, you know, uh, it's a very uh, safer and uh, it's a very easier technique so that um, I think uh, everybody now uh, use a cold polypectomy or cold, uh, cold biopsy horseps polypectomy uh, because uh, it's uh, so uh, bleeding rate or perforation rate is uh, so lower than uh, standard polypectomy. But look back uh, the history, uh, he is a uh, uh, Dr. Shinya, uh, he's a, a very famous doctor because uh, he developed uh, so polypectomy snare uh, technique uh, in uh, 1996. I'm sorry. And uh, he's living in, living in in uh, New York now, but I think maybe more more than 70 years old. But anyway, so uh, he's still now uh, working uh, in the New York. And uh, he saved, uh, this technique saved a uh, uh, patient life uh, using a colonoscopy. And this is a uh, uh, review of the cold uh, snare polypectomy. And as you know, in 1992, uh, Italian doctor, uh, Tepelo, uh, he developed uh, so called snare polypectomy at the first time. Uh, the target is less than five million, five million size. And uh, he said uh, called snare polypectomy as a guillotine, guillotine dissection at that time. So, uh, as you see this slide, uh, since the 2011, uh, many uh, paper has been uh, so published in this very famous journal. 
you know, because uh, why the cold snare poipectomy was so questioned is uh, we are talking about, uh, so how to remove the, the small polyps uh, because uh, it was a topic dissect and discard policy at that time. So American society gastroenterology, uh, so uh, recommend uh, the dissect and the discard policy uh, less than five in size. And uh, so that uh, how to remove so safer, so easier, uh, it's a uh, so topic. So that uh, we need uh, the called snare polypectomy or called forceps polypectomy for the uh, diminutive polyp at that time. So that, uh, so since uh, 2011, uh, many papers uh, has been published. And uh, what is called polypectomy is, um, uh, this slide uh, gave me the, from the Dr. Raju. Um, the, you know, um, so hot snare, uh, polypectomy, standard hot snare polypectomy cut uh, into the, uh, so including uh, so mucosa and the sun mucosa also. And uh, in the sun mucosa, uh, so many uh, vessels can uh, exist. So uh, if you cut the hot snare polypectomy using a cutting current or using a coagulation current, you cut the bezels also, uh, so you cut. So, but uh, compared to the hot snare polypectomy, cold snare resection, uh, so cold snare uh, resect only the surface layer, uh, especially the mucosa only. Uh, so above the muscularis mucosa, so that uh usually we can we cannot cut the bezels because uh in the mucosa uh, there are a few bezels and the very thin bezels so that's why uh the uh, so the bleeding rate is uh, so few in the using a cold polypectomy cold snare resection and I think uh, nowadays, uh, so this is the uh, so indication for cold snare polypectomy. Uh, in the world widely, uh, cold snare polypectomy uh, is uh, used for diminutive polyps, one to five million size. I think maybe uh, less than five million size, uh, cold biopsy horseps uh, polypectomy also useful. And uh, small parts, six to nine million size, uh, we are using uh, called snare polypectomy, often be commonly, uh, or sometimes, uh, so we suspect some high grade dysplasia, uh, we use a uh, hot snare polypectomy or standard EMR technique. This is a uh, so crescent study, uh, we, conducted uh, several years ago. Uh, in this study, uh, so we enrolled uh, so uh, almost 800 patients and uh, so 402 patients uh, uh, so uh, randomized into the hot snare polypectomy group and uh, the other 394 patients uh, uh, randomized into cold snare polypectomy group. And uh, in this study, poly, uh, in this study, uh, primary endpoint is um, so the, uh, the complete resection rate. And in this study, showed uh, so for the uh, uh, four to five million size uh, small polyps, uh, so complete resection rate between the hot snare and the cold snare and polypectomy is almost same. You know, as you see. And also uh, nine to uh, six to nine million size uh, uh, polyp uh, between the hot snare, cold snare. Also, uh, the complete resection rate is almost same. So that uh, we concluded. Uh, so uh, from this study, uh, cold snare polypectomy is very effective uh, and feasible 
uh, method, uh, less than 10 million size, uh, diminutive or small poems. It's published in the GAT a few years ago. And uh, recently, uh, so Dr. Takeuchi, uh, he's a very famous uh, colonoscopist, uh, so they reported one uh, paper. Uh, he, he, con he conducted one uh, prospective study, uh, continuous anticoagulation and cold snail polypectomy versus uh, heparin bridging and hot snail polypectomy patient on uh, anticoagulant with uh, substantial polyps. And uh, so he concluded uh, patient having uh, so uh, uh, CA and uh, with uh, cold snail polypectomy for substantial colorectal polyps uh, for the saving oral anticoagulants did not have increased incidence of polypectomy related major bleeding. So that, uh, so, uh, so cold snail polypectomy is a very effective and the safer technique, uh, the patient under the continuous anticoagulation methods. This is uh, published last year. And uh, how about the bleeding rate? And um, this is a uh, meta-analysis uh, published two years ago on, in the digestive endoscopy. And uh, so as you see, the uh, uh, delayed bleeding rate uh, is uh, significantly uh, so uh, lower than the uh, so uh, standard called snare por uh, standard polypectomy technique, as you see. So uh, also uh, it, from this study, uh, from this uh, data, uh, the called snare polypectomy, uh, less than ten million size polyps, uh, is a safer technique compared than the standard polypectomy. But uh, one problem. Uh, we Japanese uh, sometimes uh, we meet some uh, depressed time lesion or some flat lesion uh, which embed to some goes deeper, uh, so called the Denova type uh, lesion. Uh, this is uh, how about uh, this lesion located in the descending column. And, uh, uh, sorry. And uh, this lesion, uh, the white light endoscopy, I think uh, uh, sometimes difficult. But uh, so uh, this lesion is slightly uh, depressed. And the switch to NBI, uh, you can see the bezels, but in the center, uh, the depressed area, uh, it's, uh, uh, you cannot see bezels or surface pattern as well. And uh, this lesion is uh, removed by the standard EMR technique. But unfortunately, uh, this lesion is uh, embedded to some mucosa and the surgical stump positive because uh, and the uh, uh, basal uh, involvement positive. So that's sometimes uh, less than five in size polyp uh, embedded to some mucosa, especially a depressor type lesion. So that uh, we need uh, so uh, diagnostic endoscopy is essential before starting uh, cold snare polypectomy. So um, we uh, developed uh, so Janet classification uh, a few years ago, and uh, maybe you can learn uh, from the internet uh, Janet classification. You know, uh, genetic classification fundamentally uh, divided into four types, uh, type one and the type two divided into two types and the type three. And type one uh, is uh, so the uh, uh, relatively, uh, it's, a, it's a correlate with uh, uh, sessile cellulitic region or hyperplastic polyp. And the bezel is invisible and the surface pattern is uh, uh, usually, uh, regular DAC or white spots can be seen. Compare type one and uh, type three, uh, and uh, sometimes uh, so basal is loose or lost, 
and uh, the surface is amorphous. There's no no surface button. It's uh, correlated with uh, so deep some goes and invis cancer. And the other is uh, so our target uh, by the so endoscopy treatment type. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, two A is uh, bezels is, is very regular and uh, surface pattern also regular tubular like uh, blunt like or oval like. It's a uh, correlated with low grade adenoma. And uh, type two B, uh, it's uh, the soft uh, bezel. A slightly uh, so irregular distribution and uh, variable caliber can be seen and the surface pattern also irregular or obscure. It's uh, relatively uh, so correlated with uh, high grade dysplasia or slightly embedded to some cause. So that this region is a target for the uh, EMR or ESD. And uh, in nowadays in Japan, uh, so everybody uses uh, so this uh, genet classification. So the uh, uh, please, uh, so if you look, uh, if you learn the genet classification by yourself, uh, so please search genet classification on YouTube. Uh, you can see the so uh, genet classification uh, on the YouTube. Uh, this is uh, YouTube. And uh, it's a uh, uh, English uh, translation uh, explanation. Can you you can you can hear, and uh, you can you can see the very uh, clear uh, image. Only ten minutes. So so please visit uh, so such Janet classification on YouTube. You can down. I show you another another case. Uh, this case, uh, lectin, uh, four million size, four million size. So, uh, as you see, the uh, this lesion located in the lectin, and uh, so fundamentally, this lesion uh, showing uh, so depressed, and the depressed area showing uh, reddish, and with a nodule in the center. And we zoom, switch to NBI. Uh, you can see the, ah, uh, sorry. You can see some irregular uh, bezel. And this this area is, is so, so, so bezel cannot, cannot see. But anyway, so the other area showing the, the uh, some irregular bezels. So, um, you know, this region, bezel pattern is uh, so irregular distribution and the variable caliber, you know, the back, you understand? So this is uh, not typical uh, low grade adenoma. This is a uh, suspect some, uh, so high grade dysplasia lesion. So anyway, so, so that this region classified as a genet 2 b so that we recommend uh, so chrome endoscopy. So after injury chromine die, the, uh, this lesion uh, showing a clear depressed area and with a crystal bar staining. I think a crystal bar staining is not enough, uh, uh, but, but uh, in Japan we can use, uh, but you, as you see, the pit pattern, uh, very, uh, you can see the irregular pit patterns. The sun pits uh, is not straight, very shaggy, and uh, some pits very small, some pits enlarged, and the direction is not same. So that uh, this region, uh, so suspect the cancer. Uh, but I think the region is very small, uh, four million in size. So that uh, um, uh, this region diagnosed uh, uh, intramucosal cancer or some cause of slightly invasive cancer. We made the diagnosis.
So we try to uh, standard EML, not called SNAIL perfectomy, like this. And uh, as you see, the uh, this depressed area, I think uh, this is one, two, three, four million size. No, one, two, three, four, just like a four million size region. And uh, this is a histology. And uh, this is a, a nodule, but this nodule component is uh, so, granulation tissue, there's no glands, but maybe due to some breathing. Uh, but, uh, so the other is uh, so uh, showing us very, uh, uh, so hyperchromative, uh, so uh, glands. And uh, high, this is a high power view. As you see, the uh, uh, nuclei is, uh, so some nuclei is in, enlarged, some nuclei is small, and but every nuclei is a very hyperchromative, so that this lesion uh, diagnosed as a high-grade dysplasia. In Japan, we call the intramucosal cancer. So, so that so the incidence of like uh, so uh, uh, high-grade dysplasia less than five million sites is very low. I think uh, less than one percent. But anyway, so uh, uh, if you let the, uh, if you meet the, so some flat or depressed type uh, lesion, if you suspect the cancer, you don't, you don't use a cold snail resection and you, you, you perform the standard EMR or standard polypectomy and uh, you retrieve the lesion and uh, uh, you send to pathology and uh, you need, you get the final pathology diagnosis. It's a very uh, essential way. Okay, so uh, anyway, so diagnosis uh, is very important, even uh, performing the codes and perfectomy. So um, how to perform code perfectomy? I think in Japan now uh, we use uh, three uh, so snare. One is uh, uh, exact code snare. This is from the US endoscopy. And uh, second, a uh, snare master uh, is uh, Olympus company. And uh, the other is a captivator to uh, code snare. Uh, code snare is the Boston Scientific. And I think uh, so uh, usually. 10 million size uh, uh, snare is very useful uh, because uh, our indication for the cold snare is uh, less than 10 million size. If to capture the uh, uh, 10 million size uh, so snare, uh, it's uh, uh, available, uh, it's an indication uh, for the cold snare. So I, I use uh, this 10 million size snare oftenly. So I use a Boston snare or Olympus snare, uh, snare master or captivator two snare. Uh, I use oftenly. And uh, how to perform the cold polypectomy? Uh, maybe you perform the every day. Um, so it's a uh, very easy. Uh, this is a ca captivator two uh, snare and attach the lesion, attach the snare, surround the lesion, and squeeze, and cut. Only surface, you know? So there is no breathing. And uh, the other small region, and it's called snare uh, polypectomy, uh, called forceps polypectomy is okay. That uh, cold snare this action is okay, and uh, as you see, you cut we cut all, always uh, the surface, not include uh, some some cosa. So it's very uh, key to perform the cold snare action uh, under the safe. And. Um, I think uh, recently, uh, so 
very uh, when you insert the so colonoscopy, you often uh, identify the small polyps uh, during the insertion phase. You know, and I think uh, so. Uh, these uh, polyps are uh, generally removed during uh, uh, withdrawal phase when you reach the cecum and back to the so lectern uh, when you uh, polypectomy when you perform uh, you perform the so when you withdrawal phase it's a standard but I think uh, so sometimes uh, uh, small tiny uh, lesion uh, less than 10 million size, even uh, located in the left sigmoid. Uh, often, the uh, so the detection of such polyps, uh, especially flat or small, is not easy. Uh, so, upon the withdrawal, you know, especially left side, we lost or missed. So, uh, this is uh, our uh, I introduced the two techniques, the uh, two uh, novel uh, so idea. One uh, is uh, recently we published this uh, suction mark making uh, suction mark methods, uh, so called kiss mark sign kiss mark method. Uh, as you see, uh, you identify the lesion here very. Mm, invisible, but uh, the polyps are identified uh, in uh, insertion phase. But uh, so I think everybody is uh, wondering, ah, uh, when I was the phase, uh, can I identify this lesion again? I think me too. So uh, how to identify easily? So we developed uh, this method. Shock suction mark uh, method. And uh, in this trial, uh, we uh, prospectively, uh, so we try uh, the, this uh, suction mark sign. Uh, the target is uh, uh, adenomas or sessile serrated region less than 10 million size polyps or hyperplastic polyp for 10, 6 to 10 million size, uh, both located in the left side, uh, left sigmoid uh, region. Right, and uh, how to perform the procedure. Uh, when you insert, you identify the lesion to that section uh, surround mucosa. Now suction, kiss, kiss the mucosa using a biopsy channel. So a few seconds later, you can make a uh, so kiss mark, you know, very easily. And this is a withdrawal phase. Withdraw, and uh, we are looking for the polyps. Or identify the kiss mark, but where is the polyps? But here is polyps. Okay, so very easy identified when we perform the, when we make a kiss mark uh, surround the vision when you insert insertion phase. This is a one of the uh, our technique. And um, in this trial, we uh, prospectively uh, we try perform the so uh, suction mark uh, for the. Uh, 39 polyps, and uh, a totally uh, so almost all polyps uh, suc successfully uh, the detection can be available. So uh, I think uh, there is no missed polyp, and so that I think uh, this method is very easy, and there is no uh, so difficult technique or there is no access uh, use use of the accessories such as clip or dye solution, only suction and making a kiss mark on the on the chronic wall. Right? So this is a very really, uh, unique uh, so uh, method to uh, de-identify the part.
And, uh, but uh, <clears throat> some doctors, uh, me too, uh, usually uh, uh, we remove, I remove uh, the polyps, less than 10 million size polyp, uh, when I insertion phase. So, so that um, I insert colonoscopy and when I identify the polyps in the left sigmoid colon, I remove at that time. And then I insert to the cecum and uh, uh, we uh, withdraw again. And when I uh, so identify the polyps so that uh, additionally we uh, so try to remove. And uh, we try, uh, this is uh, published uh, GIE uh, in this uh, year. Uh, this uh, so prospective trial is uh, the enrolled patient uh, so divided into two group. Uh, a study group is a polyp. Uh, when you identify the polyp, uh, so uh, polypectomy at that time and cecum intubation, and then uh, so withdrawing. And if you identify the polyp. Uh, you 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 perform the polypectomy again, and uh, so the other control group is uh, uh, firstly you insert to the cecum, and and then so uh, so withdrawal phase you remove the uh, polyps, and the target region is uh, same uh, adenoma or cess isolated region less than ten million size. And the uh, hyperplus polyp is uh, six okay. to ten million size, and uh, target is uh, left side of the colon, so that uh, so uh, sigmoid or rectum, right? And uh, uh, the uh, so this study uh, primary endpoint is uh, uh, we we uh, so evaluated the. In, uh, Procedure time, which procedure time is uh, shorter? Uh, it's a primary endpoint. And uh, this is uh, results. Uh, study group, it's a significant uh, procedure time is uh, shorter than control group, you know? So that if you try to perform the polypectomy, cold snare polypectomy in the left side polyp, when you, so when you insert, you can save the time. Uh, because, uh, so when you withdraw uh, phase, when you uh, looking for the polyps, but uh, sometimes uh, you miss, or sometimes uh, you, you, it is difficult to de-identify. So you, you have you spend the time in the sigmoid column to to search the polyp again and again, so you lost the time. But you 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 perform the so polypectomy in the insertion phase, you you shortcut the time. So uh, in this in this trial, uh, so fifteen percent reduction uh, so total procedure time if you perform the so. Uh, insertion phase polypectomy. And, uh, and then also, uh, so polypectomy, uh, so uh, adenoma detection rate uh, is almost the same, you know. So that, uh, so uh, I think, uh, so con this study showed that, uh, so insertion phase polypectomy is very effective. And uh, so we can shortcut the procedure time. So try, uh, so your daily practice. And uh, this is, uh, so we, we uh, so uh, showed uh, the last year in the UEGW, um, the, this is my junior, and we got the prize. And uh, this is published on the GIE uh, this uh, April. So please uh, look the paper, please act study. So uh, in my conclusion, uh, so I think a recent study shows a significantly shorter procedure time using a cold snail polypectomy compared to the hot snail polypectomy. 
And uh, so, as you know, a cold sodium protectomy uh, reduced uh, delayed bleeding. And uh, we recommend the cold sodium protectomy as a standard treatment for the uh, less than 10 million signs uh, benign colorectal problems, you know. And then, uh, so this is, uh, uh, I introduced um, <clears throat> our Asian country, uh, so doctors. Uh, so I and uh, Dr. F uh, Professor Philip Shu and Hong Kong uh, PWH, uh, we are making uh, two uh, books uh, last three years. And uh, fortunately this year, uh, we published uh, two books. So one is uh, so uh, early gastric cancer uh, diagnosis, and the second uh, volume is uh, early gastric gastrointestinal cancer treatment phase. So uh, I think maybe uh, in this autumn uh, you can buy uh, these uh, two books. Uh, so please uh, visit uh, Amazon.com. Thank you very much for your kindness and attention. Hello. Okay. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me, Dr. Sano? Sure. Okay. We will start with a, a session of question and answers. Okay. And we will use uh, the audience can use the the generator of, of characters uh, of the chat in order to make the question, and uh, we will read it to you, and you will answer the question. It's okay. Okay. Okay, let's wait uh, the, for the people to start making questions. Uh, I, I, I will start with one. Uh, when you uh, detect a 10 millimeter lesion on right column, uh, maybe a, a possible candidate for a cold snare, uh, do you use in a, in, a, in, a, in a way of a sequence the tools of diagnosis, mean, I mean, uh, we mean, uh, uh, white light first, of course. Mm. Uh, after that, uh, NBI mm. uh, uh, with high definition and uh, optic magnifying uh, image. And after that, indigo carmine or and magnification, or you prefer only one of those uh, methods. Uh, um, so uh, in the light side column, uh, so I often uh, so both right side and left side also. Uh, I performed the uh, uh, first three white light diagnosis and uh, then uh, so switch to uh, NBI or BLI and uh, uh, we make uh, so diagnosis. And we suspect some cancer or high grade dysplasia or some uh, unclear uh, futures uh, so, so that we spray uh, in zeocalmin dye with a magnification and only uh, invasive cancer or genet 2 v type lesion uh, we spray the uh, so crystal bio dye but that the incidence is very low usually maybe a 90 percent more than 90 percent is also only uh, so NBI with uh, zoom or white light okay okay yeah and uh, here comes the, uh, the the questions. Here we have one. Uh, uh, thanks for your lecture. My question is: Do you think that artificial intelligence oh. will change your approach? Yeah, uh, it's a very important question. Uh, do you know a uh, doctor uh, Mori and Doctor Misawa? He's uh, they are developer of the artificial intelligence uh, in the brain system from the Olympus company. And uh, we talk about, uh, so in the future uh, perspective uh, for the colonoscopy. I think, I think, or they think uh, uh, still uh, detection may be replaced by artificial intelligence because uh, when I sleepy, when I, when I, drunk uh, so <laughs> too much the next morning is maybe uh, it's difficult to perform the colonoscopy and uh, sometimes we some possibility to overlook some uh, flat type uh, so lesion but 
artificial intelligence are always uh, there so uh, they can detect the lesion, uh, even I, I, I drug. Anyway, uh, so detection may be uh, AI assist uh, maybe completely in the future. But I think uh, uh, diagnosis is uh, still uh, human is better, you know. Mm. Mm. Uh, Misawa, uh, Dr. Misawa and Dr. Mori also, uh, they are uh, thinking so. Mm. Okay, we have a question from Dr. Roque Sainz. Uh, sometimes when we perform a uh, cold snare resection, we can find at the base of the ulcer a whitish protrusion. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, mm. what, what, yeah. what do you think about that, that tissue? Is that a, a submucosal uh, a, a tissue or do you think it's another thing? Okay, uh, this is uh, also uh, uh, a good question. But uh, some, I'm sorry, uh, maybe American doctors uh, already uh, so published the paper on GI, I think uh, two or three years ago. And uh, so I know after this action called scenario detection, some, yeah, you know, uh, some, you mean that like this. So like this, white tissue can be seen. So they, after this action, uh, if the, you can see that some uh, whitey tissue like this, they bite again here and the, they send to pathology. And this is uh, their uh, paper. And uh, this uh, so whitey tissue is, uh, they proved um, muscularism causa. Mm. Mm. Okay, so, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, we have, we have here questions from, from Central America, Guatemala, Brazil, Peru. Okay, uh, there, there's one more, more, more question from uh, Abel Jalif. Okay, the cold snare polypectomy at the entrance seemed to, to meet the obvious choice in order to avoid losing the polyp at the withdrawal. And the suction mark is amazing. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, 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 from uh, Professor Lix, uh, the, the Brazilian gastroenterologist. Yeah, Lix yeah. Ribeira, okay. Do you think the cap could help us to do cold snare polypectomy in difficult places <laughs> in the colon? Mm. Um, so, cap. Uh, I don't use usually cap, uh, but I think for the detection, uh, the tiny or diminutive points, uh, cap is very useful. So I think uh, uh, cap is useful uh, for the detection uh, rather than uh, so treatment, I think. Okay, there's one more question. Do you think it would be acceptable to increase the 10 millimeters threshold for cold snare polypectomy for cecil cerebrated adenomas, for example, uh, for 13 to, to uh, from 12 to 13 in the right column? Hmm. Um, yeah. So uh, it's still, uh, we need uh, some debate uh, because of some. Uh, Michael Buck, Professor Michael Buck group uh, showed uh, so some uh, so piecemeal uh, cold snare technique for the uh, cesar select lesion more than 10 million size. And uh, they published uh, some papers, uh, some safety and the effective feasibility of the uh, piecemeal cold snare rejection. But um, I think. Um, you know, uh, the symptom in size, cesar uh, cell lesion sometimes uh, include uh, some uh, dysplasia or uh, so sometimes uh, invas invasive cancer. So as you know, a cold snail polypectomy uh, so removes the only surface. So uh, if you perform the piecemeal EMR, uh, so some invasive cancer, uh, so, few years later, recurrence can be 
because mm -hmm. I have some cases. Um, so yes, piecemeal EMR uh, performed for the system isolate lesion, but uh, some dysplasia containing uh, histology. And uh, one or two years later, uh, recurrence, invasive cancer uh, can be seen at the, at the same, same point. So that uh, I usually don't perform the course in imperpectomy for the less than, uh, more than 10 minute size. Okay, from Dr. Rocket Sainz, do you diagnose and leave the hyperplastic small polyp? That's an old question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, this environment inside uh, hyperplastic polyp in the left sigmoid cone, uh, I don't use uh, uh, called polypectomy or yeah, leave inside you. And uh, by side column, and uh, sometimes uh, I perform the biopsy forceps polypectomy. Okay. okay. From Clever Nunes from Brazil, if you have a cancer in proximal column and a polyp of 10 millimeters in, sig in, in sigmoid column, is it safe to remove them? Do you believe that a spill, a spill hem uh, from a tumor can implant at the site uh, of the pectomy? <clears throat> yes, uh, <clears throat> I know. Uh, in a uh, UK, uh, so UK, um, yeah, uh, guideline. Uh, I saw that some possibility of the uh, implantation uh, after polypectomy uh, when 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 uh, insertion technique. Uh, but I think uh, in the real world, I think I have never uh, experienced such uh, implant and the recurrence cases. So I I, I think. Uh, yeah, there is some possibility, I know, but uh, I think 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90 percent, almost 100%, it's a safe, I think, I believe. Okay. But there is no evidence. Okay, from Pablo yeah. Navarro, a cold snare a polypectomy in bigger polyps, more than 10 millimeters, is safe and effective. Usually injection with dye, helps to better recognize the borders of the lesion. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I think uh, it's, it's a, uh, yeah, we can, we can cut the more than 10 minute size using a cold snare polypectomy. Uh, yeah, and, and um, yes, but it, I think there's no trial, uh, randomized control trial uh, still. Uh, but I think uh, t less than 10 minute size, there are many papers, but uh, more than 10 minute size, less than 20 minute size paper, maybe a few. So we can perform more than 10 minute size uh, lesion if you inject the saline and uh, using a cold polypectomy. But uh, I, I still, now I don't recommend because uh, uh, there's no, um, there's a few evidence. Okay. Uh, do you use underwater cold snare resection? Oh, yes. Uh, sometimes I use, uh, so underwater. Okay. Uh, from yeah. Mario Ray from Colombia. When did you decide, when, you de when, when, when did you decide to make a multiple co uh, uh, cold snare polypectomy or an ESD in a three centimeters adenoma or larger? Uh, three centimeters. Uh, so I think uh, maybe uh, usually uh, three centimeters uh, ADST glandular type, maybe it's okay for the cold snare piecemeal resection. But uh, flat uh, ADST non glandular types, three centimeters, I think maybe some. Uh, invasive area uh, can exist. So uh, we recommend uh, uh, unblocked resection using uh, EMR or uh, ESD technique. A comment from Professor Lix Oliveira. Great yeah. presentation, Sano Sensei. Thank Arigato you for sharing from. your, your <laughs> knowledge. <laughs> and, uh, okay, in a 2A lesion, do you elevate the lesion before cold snare polypectomy? Well, I think you already said that. 
No uh, two way uh, less than ten million size. I uh, don't use uh, so any injection before court. Okay. Okay. I think that we are at the end of the questions, and uh, maybe Doctor Asadur wants to uh, say goodbye to the activity. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Sano. It was very nice uh, having this uh, presentation and having uh, all, all of this uh, interaction with Latin American uh, gastroenterology.